Now. And the opening sound and the opening bell. Ding, ding, We're ding, ding. Live. That's in right. A, in a perfect world, Vincent. It, it would be a perfect world. Well, it is a perfect world. Yeah. It's perfectly insane. Perfect. <laughs> We're contrasting the occupation today this, right here. This mess runs on batteries that died years ago, and people are dragging it behind them, but they call it the future. It's very, it's, it's very entertaining to watch. Very entertaining. Welcome to Real Liberty Media, RLM Radio. And we are live today. What's today? Today is the January the 8th. 8th of January, 2019, the first full week of the new and upcoming year. And Are, aren't you it excited? Is, I'm very. It is uh, okay. also Elvis ta, 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 ta. Presley's birthday, be 84 today. But he Happy died birthday. in like the 70s, so he won't yeah. be around to appreciate Vin, Vinny's appreciation. Well, I'm here today is Vinny Elvis, thank you very much, and my co-host here, Flash Somebody, generally, but today we're debating his <laughs> title as either uh, Flash Jackson or Michael Somebody, so the king, the kings of rock and roll. Remember, we uh, we did talk about who? Oh, you thought, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand that. Somebody. I don't I even remember who you said, but. Clapton and Keith. Well, whatever. Whoever they are, everybody Two best knows. Guitarists. Everybody knows Michael Jackson and Elvis Presley. Well, so what? I don't give a shit what everybody else likes. If I cared what everybody else liked, I'd be on that's, Facebook begging people to like me. That's that. See, that's your problem. I'd be going, "Oh, I'm on Facebook. Love me, love me, long time." <laughs> I got <laughs> pictures. That <laughs> brings to mind a John Wayne movie. Uh, yeah, McClintock, where uh, the old guy, Uncle Joe from Petticoat Junction, he's on there. And then John Wayne's son is uh, the the farmer. And so he said, you got to beg, boy. You got to beg just a little bit. Hey, did you hear the bad news about the CIA? No. The is there top, bad news? To, yeah, for the, for the Magtown guys. Those for guys. them or for us? For, I guess for if you're hey if you like the CIA you're mental, but the top three I, positions run in the CIA at this time in history, ladies and gentlemen, are held by the weaker gender. So proving for once and all that women are seriously as fucked up as we are, you have nothing left to hide behind. You have women running the CIA at the top three levels. You lose. <laughs> yeah, that one gal, that little short brown-headed gal, she was uh, all involved in that torture and stuff. There goes what? Well, there goes their uh, their complaint about not being treated equal. Oh, I just told you, you're all as insane as we are. Welcome to the club. See, it's all a mental. It's a mental game. There's nothing to it. It's all a bunch you, of crap. Do you see what? Rob saying about me? Ah, I sound a lot like Hal. I hope he means that in a good way. I like Hal. Hal's got a <laughs> Hal's got a fun radio voice too. He has a good voice. Yeah, yeah he's got a good radio. What him and Grimner? I like Grimner Grimner. absolutely. And then yeah. the women's. I, I like listen to Grimner girl. again over at the yeah. uh, on the YouTube. Yeah, I'll play. And the uh, Miss Mary. Yeah, well, Mary's due back tomorrow, as far as I've been told. Haven't heard from her yet. But I sent her a, a mean thing on the, on the wire. I told her to stop being fucking sick. <laughs> I don't do the listen. I, get well, well. I but, I got to remind you something here. How, how you said that? Now let's go back and talk about our uh, vibrational frequencies. You've seen how uh, you say bad things over water and this and that. You've seen that video. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. Words and stuff. Words. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you can't. It seems to me like that you would have just countered that. Probably cursing. Yeah. But I I typed it. I didn't I didn't speak it. I only you typed did. it on the you internet. Don't, you you just did. Well, it's like the trade. Hey, wait a minute. If she oh. doesn't read it, it didn't happen. So be quiet. Quit you're raining. Not, quit raining you're on not, my. You're, you're raining not on my first. Raining on my joke. I'm gonna. You're not. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Come on, All let's right. go here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have so, to keep reminding you of these things. But sometimes. yeah, I think you're just judging me because you can. <laughs> That's right. Listen, hey, here what? is uh, I'm dropping okay. this off right here. Oh, here. he's hearing yeah. hell. Wait a minute. 
I get it, but I put did it. I changed everything right, Grim. <laughs> I don't no know. wonder, no wonder you sound like Hal because I he like, was listening to Hal. <laughs> Hal does the show too. It's Sunday night, well, my night, your day. <laughs> Sunday. So listen, I'm, there is uh, there's grim leftovers right there, and uh, go very on the YouTube. And give it a click in the yeah. In the, good uh, good times with grim on the Monday night thing, mm -hmm. and, it, and it inspired me to to beg Miss Moose this morning to do her own do her own thing, do a little music and some uh, some link stuff that she's into, because when she knows what she's you know got something specific to say about, it, she makes a lot of sense. So I told Cirque that. And Cirque and, uh, has invited, no, because it's radio. <laughs> now she doesn't want me to talk about it, so figure it out, folks. <laughs> go away, oh, I'm busy, oh. Well, here we go. Anyway, so up, up and coming things that we're all pushing for, for other people to do, thanks to Grim. And Grim yeah. did it, and he did it himself as an example, so it made it easier, you know. Yeah, Grimner's done what, uh, I mean, it's a vision that I've had for a long time to be able to be a part of something like this right here and help be a part of the uh, uh, content as a creator. And it's important to have a, a venue like this. And it's unfortunate that it has not been... Uh, that, that more people haven't come along and seen the idea right here and, and uh, get involved. Well, look what, Grim, look what Grim wrote on the main chat, right? So if you read that and then you hear all these horror stories, I hang out on minds.com and uh, realliberty.org sometimes. A few other places where I go to get information, but uh, I, I read things about the sites fucking with the numbers, Oh, they yeah, they do. As a matter of fact, I watched, I, I watched uh, uh, being uh, on the Real Liberty Media YouTube channel as an administrator, be able to open that up. And what it's showing public views and then what the views are behind it actually yeah. are, are higher. But right. also right. The, right. the analytics of uh, watch time is affected because, like for myself, I go there uh, back and forth between the videos and uh, checking this and that, either doing an edit or add to or uh, checking uh, comments and so forth. So then that takes away from the actual watch time uh, as far as to the average. Uh, and it's not. Right, but adding. it's all manipulated with. It's manipulation. Yeah, yeah. it's all. It's a bunch of bull. Well, because Grim puts up port 40, they get got a little counter on the uh, bit shoot thing on the front. Uh huh. Well, it strikes me you got like 350 people have. Reg have um, subscribed to RLM on on YouTube, but there's never any numbers for for any of us on on the RLM when we do podcasts. Yeah, the numbers. Now you're, are it's yeah, but see, three hundred forty-seven. What'd you say? You know that, but I, something like the three fifty. I was close. Oh, you said that. Okay, good. Yeah, but I remember yeah. when we were scrounging for a hundred, and Grim was teasing me <clears throat> and you about it. Yeah, I did a big uh, big drive. We made it. Yeah. But what, okay, and like I've been saying all along, though, <coughs> you can only speak to so many people to get any particular point across at one time. And after a certain number, you really defeated. You're, you're not, doesn't matter what you say. It's like uh, Trump. It doesn't matter what Trump says. He's got a big audience of people to listen to it. And the bigger the audience, the less anything will come of what you say. The things that get done are done on a small scale, and the shit that's repeated out loud is usually exaggerations of the truth. Oh, now I baby, go thank you. Bring some. I, I got some promo and to do, hmm. uh, but also wait a minute. I'm gonna go back over here. This whoop, is a uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. what? What are promo just, in? Are, are you just uh, uh, open me? Yeah, in? I was trying listen, to find listen, out what you're talking listen, about. Listen, I need you to do me a favor. Your mouth shut. Listen. No. Listen. I don't do Wait. that. Okay, here we go. Are you ready? Yeah. Can't help yourself, can you? No, but Grim's no, posting but, on but. the uh, RLM right now, and I'm but, more interested but, in that but, than your but, direction. But. Hey, Hansel, <laughs> knock it off. You're annoying me. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Okay, now Grimner's, listen. Hold on. What? 
What? What's so yeah, important? We're, we're Are you coming? We're you're yes, under your son. All farm. integrated, right? <laughs> well, that's son. You just don't. Wait, we're, we're going to come back to sound minds, but hmm. this this is an answer to your dilemma that you're currently having with yourself. <laughs> dilemma. Uh huh. Hmm. I think there's pills for that though. Okay, so from uh. Writing momentum. Here's here's a little bit. What's a line from your writer's manifesto? And this can also be in your life's manifesto. And I say and have said, hmm. and we'll say again, hmm. if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. Yeah. You you've now, said that before. Yes. Now to the to the big shout out and thanks in the promo uh goes to Sound Minds who's uh, been carrying over a lot of work from here at uh, Real Liberty Media and has really expanded the view. So that, that goes back to what you're saying there and what I'm trying to say to you is these, uh, what, reaching these, reaching these, are you okay? Reaching these people that's important. So that's not in the numbers, but it's in, it's not in quantity, but quality. quality. Yeah. Quality. And that's, that's where we got. So uh, Sound Minds uh, thanks a bunch for all you doing over here well you can say all, all that all you like and i still think that most of what we know is not applicable to anything that's useful it's just being aware that you know this stuff and you're not victim of like shit like inoculations and all that crap that society's turned into over the last 50 years that turned out to be exactly what we were told it was going to be a mess. Don't do it. They were warnings all along the way, but who listened? They were too busy with their digital watches and their or uh, toasters. too busy talking while not listening. It's a talk show, you moron. What the hell do you think I was going to do on it? I don't Tap know. dance. I'm hey, let's let's Listen, do the flash <laughs> let's do the show an interpretive dance. No, that ought okay. to blast all them right. off. Ready? No, <laughs> I, ch I challenge you to a dance off. <laughs> no thanks, Vinny. Yeah, yeah, I wait. I accept your challenge to a dance off. I believe you do. Break, break it okay. down. Oh yeah. wow! Oh, I got it. Oh, watch it. Watch this one. Hmm. Pop. Yeah. Yeah, I heard your hip pop all the way over here. <laughs> well, anyway, hey, you know, did you ever give thought to something bizarre like this? In my mind. It is not a good thing to be in the public eye. You know, where wherever you go, people r recognize you and cameras and all that celebrity shit. To me, that would be a total fucking drag, right? Then I look at people like Trump and I think, boy, he was born into a debt I'll, I'll never know. I'll never look for it. I couldn't achieve it if I tried any damn way. But it doesn't hold an appeal to me. But it holds an appeal to the people that support him. And I don't get it. I'm still lost on what is attractive about Trump's leadership if he's using the same shit that's been used for the last 50, 60 years. What difference does it make? Well, he, he, uh, he gives this hope because there's this other uh, path that uh, many people see as opposing the, uh, the uh, shadow government, the deep state, the people in power, the status quo. But really, uh, he's got the same old uh, peoples of power uh, carrying on as it has been, just like you said. Well, the way that I look at this is he's, he's telling the public he's going to go out and prosecute the people that employ him. And I think it's a bunch of shit. <laughs> I'm not falling for that crap. I saw him kill Kennedy, for fuck's sake. It was on television. Well, I, I got to ask you this. Anybody but, that plays pool with pegs in the table, mm. what kind of craziness is this? Did you like that or not? No. I thought, oh, it was a fun game. When I, when I first sat down to play it, I was very impressed. Very difficult. It's like a, a short billiard table with What pockets. do you do? You got to pull out one pin if you get the like pins, a... The pins are set up in a design in the center of the table. And you either try not to knock them down or you try to knock them down. That's your strategy. 
And why do you do that? Because you score more points knocking them down than you do not knocking them down. But you can't hit it directly. That's why there's two balls. You got it. <laughs> you got to use one ball into the other ball into your target. And you so try to a, knock them all down like bowling. Yeah, pretty much in the long run. Yeah, but you so get points. Is... You get points for certain plays. If if you scratch, it's good for you. Get points for that. If you're you bowling, cool. Them. Yeah, but gutter gutter balls are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm. you get paid for that. You get paid for knocking down the pins. It was an interesting form of the game. It's. Uh, I don't think it's Danish, but it's. I never saw it until I got here. I don't. What's is it? it Danish? Has it got a name? Yeah, actually, there's a site for it. That's how I. Um, but I just put the picture of the of the table. Let me see. I'll copy that. Let me put it on the RLM main feed. If you guys want to know what me and Vinny are talking about, here's a picture of it. I didn't think of that until the last second. I forget all these magical things we can do. But I took this shot in the bar one day when there was nobody on the pool table. And it's a real small table in a real small room, but we had some fun games on it. Now, I put up a, a link that didn't apply. Hold on, I'll be back. I'm not sure how to accomplish this. Let me try it once. Sorry about that. That was a um, mine's. It turns up posted on mine's link, and we can't delete the stuff we post. It's there forever. Anyway, Vinny took off for a minute. So, uh, hey, Miss B down under, if you catch the show. And then Saturday, me and Vinny had a, a dork table. He had me busting a gut. He was funnier now. Anyway. Uh, we had pancakes come in for a Saturday on the dark table. You know, and it's little things like that. Knowing your crowd by first name. And I actually know mental pancakes nose to nose on top of it. So it's uh, it's having an old friend drop in, you know, to listen to me and Vinny or me and Mary or whoever comes on the dark table. I've had a lot of people. Sometimes I've been alone on it and just blathered like a bonehead for two hours one time i got so high i did three i thought it was two but shit just kept coming to mind and you know that's what this is for because i listen to other people like when i do my puzzles and uh, other things around the house i play other links when cirque's home i try not to do it too much when cirque's home <laughs> but i still do i like to play my show into their show or their show into something I did with Vinny. Or, and poor Cirque. Like today, she didn't go to work. She stayed home to work. And suffered through my TVology. And, uh, oh, there's another thing. I found a, a site. Now I'm getting better with this computer stuff. Because uh, I'm not the super, ha super hacker I was told to be. Anyway, the point was. I found a new site called Vex Movies. And it wasn't anything, you know, that you can't find through Netflix or something like that, but it, it didn't charge. And watched quite a few old movies from, the, you know, between now and 1970. 70 as far as back as they go. Vinny! What, what? I was giving them a lecture on the do's and don'ts of free television on the interwebs. For, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's these movie sites, but um, sometimes when you're trying to click it, you got to be real quick and it opens up this stupid other window. And man, if you're too slow about getting over and closing it out, it like uh -huh. freezes you up your computer. Yeah, I found what I, I run it on my computer when I'm playing on my puzzle. It worked fine, except for through one film. And you, you know, free is free. So if it, if it played four out of five, I can't complain. That's, that's 20, an old one. That's 20% off. Ah -ha. Did you get your right one? My right what? You clicked, the, you put the wrong, that Mayans uh, feed right yeah, there. Yeah, no, I, no, did I didn't. It. It's, yeah, I, go get I the pool it, table. You didn't get the pool table one. I don't know how to transfer it because yeah. I opened it, but it opened did you, up. Did you post it on RLO? Oh, wait a minute. I know what I did wrong. Um, see, it says delivered. Oh, yeah, I posted on Mines. I must have. Oh, I know I posted on RLO. Let me open up RLO and go there and do it. Jibber-jabber for a minute while I do this. All right, so I'm over here at RLO right now, and um, I'm Come clicking on. on. I'm adding friends. It's showing me people over here. It should be on my page. So you go find that, and I'm adding friend requests. 
Oh, you're being all sociable on the real yeah. org chat room. Yeah. It's giving me, showing me peoples. You know, I'm just going boom, boom, boom. Some people have no friends. I'll be your friend. Oh, be your you're friend. so nice. You're just too nice. That's what's your problem. That's You'd be a terrible pirate. You know? Oh, no. I'd be a great pirate. How? Because you, you? you don't understand what a pirate is if you think pirates are bad. Pirates are good. Uh-huh. Real sure, pirates. Don't you sure remember? they are. Hey, hey, uh, check it out. Well, I've well, been here is, uh, is now part of realliberty.org. Uh, and that is our that is our friend Sound Minds. So, yeah, and part of the promo uh, of uh, promoting each other, you know, these – little numbers that we're talking about there that's one on one and that's where it counts and so i've been is uh one of these people that have a, a tremendous tremendous ability to, of uh, uh connecting voices yes uh, you do sir i will grant you that no i'm talking about him well i'm saying it about you uh, i'm I'm, I'm not more talking to him one on one, whereas uh, I must say he has a ability to reach out far and wide. Good, come here. Where are you at? May the fourth be with you. Uh, he sent me a referring request in the Demon Show. Huh. I thought I did. So I clicked on over there. Now here we are. Huh. Right on along. Shouldn't I be able to open up pictures on RLO and and go right to my pictures, right? Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, you should. Do I would think. I'm gonna go look for you here. Well, I, can find yours. I, I don't do these things often enough to remember how to do them. Oi, it's terrible. Oh, the pain, the suffering, life. All right, so I'm a, I'm at your timeline. I'm gonna mm. click on photos. Yeah, me too. Wait a minute. Where is photo? There that, comes no, photos right that'll here. That'll be my pictures. P pictures are the same word that means photos. It's not what I was talking about, you bonehead. Uh, I don't even See, know if you know what you're talking about. I know I don't know. <laughs> because uh, I use that button, photo, to, to bring in my, my stuff that I've taken shots of. So well, it's, it's it's loading slowly. There's a real pretty one. <laughs> it's a puzzle, and I thought it was oh, a wait a when, I, when I first saw it. <laughs> That's what I'll I do. thought. Wow, Flash is really an incredible painter. No, <laughs> and, no, that's a picture. And I, I go, puzzle. I go. What is all this line? Is it like cracked paint? <laughs> <laughs> that's a puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Did you see the finished product, or are you looking at it? Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at. It. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, the pool table. I don't be. see your pool table. Your pool table. I'm tables. getting it. You're gonna have to just add a photo. I don't see how that's possible. Yeah. I can. Shut up. I don't care what you can see. Are you sitting here in front of my computer, sir? No, but no. I'm looking at your computer. Oh, this is <laughs> a, even a better idea from what? the idea I had before. Oh, oh no. my Friday broadcast. Um, mm. Y'all, I'm stumbling through uh, mm. uh, radio writing and being able to incorporate all this in with my uh, sub severe disability of uh, computer savvy uh, but, uh yeah this gives me an idea so i'm getting help from uh i've been and, oh uh, yeah so, yeah we didn't uh we didn't get them in there on the team view and all that and stuff last time and then there's a lot of problems in the uh, uh production but uh no ma major you know thing it's uh it's just walking through there's no mistakes right i don't uh, know oh uh, no only happy accidents. Oh, that shit. Okay. Yes, five-year-old child with an <clears throat> this is our mind. Tuna, our tunication, you understand. Fit the box to hold the thing. Yeah, sure. A tunication. Oh, I was thinking of some things last night as I was going to sleep. I wonder what I could trick you into to help me build Not my... Not much. But I'm building a cult. Yeah. Don't well, be a know, derelict. <laughs> Come on. Listen, what? in order to uh, attract a following, yeah. you, you need to have value. Has What's to have that? value. Yeah. Value. I'll give them 20% off. There's your value. What else you want? Well, see, that That works. <laughs> that works yeah. a lot of times with the masses. Yeah. So, yeah. Give, 
you need to reach into your appeal. I so believe it. You're gonna need, yes, you're gonna need uh, mm -hmm. uh, happy kitten and puppy photos and videos. You know, Ugh. take and uh, get Photoshop and take your uh, puzzle you put together there yeah. and blend, blend out the lines. You know, the puzzle where the puzzle pieces connect to make it look like a real painting, and then sign your name across the bottom. All right, you want you want to hear very the, flashy. Okay, but I could actually repaint that. So I don't need to pretend to do it. I can really do it. You can paint that good? Yeah. Why don't I, I can, see anything? Because I can exactly. copy. Well, because I don't want to do it for money. I can copy what I see. I don't. I, I don't even. For, I, didn't, I didn't offer to pay you any money to do it. Well, I'm not going to do it for you. I'm just repeating my history. You're not going to do it, period. That's not for what me. I, not for free. See, not what for I was, anybody. What I was good at was copying other people's work what? instead of creating my own. So you're a plagiarist. Mm, in you're a sense. You're a dirty <clears throat> plagiarist. Yeah, but I could do the size change. I could do it small as my finger or as big as your wall. It's always hey, in proportion hello, Donna. finished. There's my friend, Dem Donna. It's got something to do with depth perception and whatnot. All those technical things that we all think we all know a lot of shit about, we don't know nothing about. Do you know about what? Nothing. 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 Something. nothing. Somebody. I, you know, did I ever tell you I came to the decision that I don't know shit? I got a lot of opinions about shit, <laughs> but when it comes to how could I prove what I believe to you, there's no way for me to do that. Well, the logical process is the trivia method. You start right, out. I'm yes, talking about how, how people behave, Vinny, not how books tell you they behave. No, you, uh, you're you saying that you want to be able to express this. How do you go into what you believe and what your opinion is, is into establishing this in a set of order that, that brings it about to be a fact? Because there are facts. But they change from person to person. No, they don't. Their interpretation, their perspective is different. Facts are facts. Then your perspective changes a, a fact into a, a, a an opinion. That's the point I'm trying to make is with the, the person that looks on is the creator. They're not they're seeing what they see. And who knows what that is? I only know what I see. There are you, you on drugs? You sound like a nineteen sixty. I'm trying to be Seven, on drugs. To a, Don't to a nineteen seventy one era hippie. Don't flower kill child. My... Don't kill my buzz, Captain Buzz. Turn kill. on. Captain turn Buzz kill, cease and desist. <laughs> How do you do all that? Yeah, tune in. Do we tune need out. Yeah, we need some knobs. L S D. No, that that's was, what I would like to see. More knobs and less buttons. It's okay, very that, simple. Toggle that was, switches. Right. That was the government click, behind click, click. That was the government behind all that shit. You're high, man. Well, you don't believe it? Okay, how else do you get a message out into society that quickly and with that kind oh, of... Oh, I'm not With that kind that. of authority no, behind I, it? Hold on, hold on. What? Listen, I wasn't disputing that fact. I'm oh. just saying, you're high, dude. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> See, and yeah, there's... A little bit. This goes to show <laughs> your biggest problem. You just don't listen. No, never. Now, me. wait a minute. Hold on. Listen, uh, I want to I give an example. I want, I want you to... Not interrupt me, okay? No. Stop. Listen. All right, you ready? <laughs> Just can't help yourself, can you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, carry on. <laughs> we'll, we'll find your next problem. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm done. Oh, okay. Anyway, d see, in the end, you prove my point by the way you <laughs> respond to it. Because you see what you see, Vinny, and I see what I see in, in the middle, like with Mary. We don't have to agree on anything. It does That doesn't matter. That's just what you're talking about. It doesn't hold any uh, physical value. It's just an idea that makes you feel good. Oh, we both agree. Trump's a dickhead. Yay! Well, in the overall balance of your life, well, whoop-de-doo. <laughs> Well, is that a fact? Is is he in fact a a prick and another in, prick in, another prick in the wall? Absolutely. Is opinion. that a fact? Sure. In I my think opinion. Yeah. I, I would I would contend it is provable. Ooh. 
provable. What do you consider proof? I defined what I thought proof was. Uh, I, I, I can, I can sum it up with uh, one of his uh, statements that he got caught on tape. Just walk right up and grab him by the front. Oh, he got caught on tape. That makes him a prick. Is yeah, that he what he said? He didn't say front hole, silly. Well, what did he say? Well, what do you think he said? Front hole. Yeah. That's what you said, so that's I what said I think. It. Yes, okay. Very good. I'm repeating you. Yep. I'm believing my source. And yet again, proving Wait, my front proving. Hole. Okay, Yo, I have to really explain this. <laughs> proving thing. Front that hole, you... <laughs> the new proper term in PC society. You now, we covered all this, I think, last time on the Philosophic Society. I hope so, because it's really ridiculous. You know, but for for any anybody alive today that's conned by this female male gender split thing and all these other games, the the politicians. I, yeah, listen, stop. You got to say front hole. No, gender you split. You can't say gender split. Don't tell me what I can it, say. We have to be PC. What authority are you representing there, Mister? I'll tell you what to say. The, I am the uh, sergeant at arms for the philosophic society. Well, you got two choices. <laughs> One of them ain't gonna happen. <laughs> it's not even that bad. You either listen or you don't. There you I go. Can't. Those are your two choices, Vincent. And I think, I be beyond all the fucking around. I think me and you understand the world fairly well and how it really works and still get on the radio a couple times a week and make fun of it yeah and i'd like to thank you for using the uh, proper uh diction in there the proper grammar of uh well instead of good and i was yes i was kindly corrected by hans dietrich Oh, were you corrected by that grammar Nazi himself? Yeah, I think it was an accident, but I said good, and yeah. he said something about well. Yeah. Oh. I stand corrected. Yeah, it's it's from yeah. an old TV show that they did in the 50s, the I Love Lucy show. And she wants to clean up her speaking, so they hire an English tutor. And the first lesson he offers them is there are two words that you never use. They're just out of bounds. One one of them is um, swell, and the other one is uh, whatever the opposite of swell was. Lousy. And they and then Fred says, well, tell us the lousy one first. Misunderstanding, those were the words. And they kept using the, you know, to make it funny, they kept repeating them. Hmm. And in the day, in the 50s, new, that was new. Comedy people hadn't <laughs> seen people making jokes on TV and all that. It was a brand new idea. Wow. Look what they did with it. They started out, and they had such a nice thing, and they turned it into the shit that we have now. Yeah, quite literally. I'm disappointed. I haven't watched a TV show that's come on since... Uh, I think maybe I like weird off the wall shit like Bob Newhart reruns. Well, you with know, Leo, Larry and Daryl and Daryl. Yeah, them guys. I, I liked uh, Beverly Hillbillies and um, the background. Oh yeah, well, you're gonna... say, yeah, the Beverly Hillbillies. Their family is not far from over here, Oxley and all that. Sexual towns just a little bit north of here where I'm at in Arkansas. Now, Granny came from over in Tennessee, uh, over back here next to Arkansas. Ah. Arkansas. Yeah. Yeah. I like uh, so. Uh, this is my problem, you know, trying to write well, not write right. Write well. Yeah. So uh, I went to the same school that uh, Jethro Bodine, did. and so I like this <laughs> English tutor you was talking about. Uh, uh, I, this is how I got it. You, you say the goo in the slew gets mainly in your shoe. Hmm. So then I heard later on it, it's the rain in Spain falls oh, you, on you know, the plane. You know, I just realized we never said hey. We never, well, we did get. That's stung, because you interrupted me. I, I interrupted tried, you. Yes, I was going to have you say hello to everybody at the RLM. Try it again. You went off on some tangent, and I, Good. I can't even try it again. So what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Look. So look, we're. Uh, right. 34 minutes in, we might as well yeah. until the top of the next hour. No, you go ahead and do it. Uh-uh, I'm not going to. Okay. You do it. 
No, we'll wait till the top of the next hour. I'm not doing it then either. Well, then don't. <laughs> you know what? You know what's in a really interesting concept right now to me, Mister. What? Mister. Know it all. Hi, Gobra. I hear you. Manipulating brainwaves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's not like new. This is old stuff and goes back quite a way. I bet it goes back a lot further than we would be able to account for. Because when you think about music and tuning forks and things that you could do with sound with old tools. Yeah, there's there's that goes back in the exploration of anti music and it's exampled in the uh, uh, syncopation of the music today. Then in Africa, you know, the drum beat uh, causes a radiation. Uh, I can't didn't say that word. Uh, Vibration. Uh, you know, the heartbeat. It changes the uh, the, the rate of, that is beating. Arrhythmia. Arrhythmia. Uh, um, something like that word right there. Trying to find. Anyways, yeah, it, it is a manipulation. It just didn't, like you said, the simplest uh, available to, tools early on. Now look at the frequency available today mm -hmm. up into the 5G. You know, even though the, uh, the the hertz inside your uh, wall socket vibrating around you. The uh, Wi-Fi, uh, any numbers, uh, different vibrational frequencies, uh, the uh, smart meters. There's power lines overhead, the big, huge uh, windmills. Examples are, are extensive. Well, Americans realize they get experimented on by the government and then the government just apologizes and then just continues to do different things they just experiment on you in a different way but it never ends i've posted the bill clinton apologizing for it from the 90s many times and people don't like it it never did get a, a much of a conversation going <laughs> Maybe it would have been better if Obama had done it. Why? But I don't, because he was black. People people are racist, Vinny. You're racist. And that, that black president bullshit proved what a bunch of racists everybody truly is. His mother was white. Doesn't matter. For fuck's sake, his mother could have been a giraffe. The, the, the man that you looked at was black. In the newspaper, you couldn't say a bad word about him or you're a racist. And everything that came from his uh, his administration was communist. Horrible shit. But he this, was the most likable looking uh, Alfred E. Newman. Oh, yeah. Sure, they Sarah. picked a good... Yeah, it was a marketing program for these crooks behind government to fuck us again. Hey, And their front man was Obama. And he, he pretended to be good for a long time. It worked. It probably worked better because he was a dark face. You can't criticize him. It was a beautiful game. I wish I would have played it. But this is cool. No. Did you check this out? Grim no. got this new uh, program. Um, and it has this, a record player up on top. Yeah, but I was bitching about Obama. Oh, I'm wow. done talking about that. It's just yak, yak, yak. You didn't talk about nothing. You haven't said anything tonight. I Mr. don't talk usually about usually got all kinds of politics. ideas. Hmm. I ain't talking no politics. You're idiots, man. I saw a you, friend from the... You I should saw, vote. That's yeah. all I can tell you. Just try it and see how well, it makes you feel. It Do it real really hard. feel anything. What are you, nuts? I don't even want the people that they want to fill the job with anywhere near the job. Those people are the so, last... I wouldn't even want them in there. Get them all out. Fucking losers. This is the best they can fucking do. A bunch of lying fucking thieves. America, the EU, all these big United Nations. These people are fucking lying sacks of shit. Need to be fucking stopped. But no. Modern day man is too civilized to put a stop to the corruption that's eating the planet up. <laughs> It's a catch-22. You know what I mean, Vinny. Kind of. Well, the legal system hijacked. The monetary system hijacked. The public information system hijacked. The government claims that there's like a trillion dollars worth of uh, college debt now. Where did that come from? College debt. Debt. It's the next one past the... Uh... The housing bubble. It's a student yeah, loan but, bubble. Okay. Yakety, yakety, yak. Yakety, yak. 
Yakety Fuck. yak. Hold on. Hey. Don't Look. Listen. Rap. Listen. 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 Hey. Listen. Uh, Are you listening? No. Okay. Uh, hey, this is uh, yeah the Grim Leftovers, and we had uh, Russian Ooh. chicks global global debt default. Right. <laughs> added <laughs> food in yeah. Global uh, hope and the uh, redneck <laughs> rampage. But I want to go down here to the. I want to go down <laughs> yeah, here to the, the bottom global of that. debt because Grim was yeah. talking during the show about uh, where to follow along, and this is uh, follow me, which is uh, actually Grim Nero. Uh, realliberty.org. Here's all these uh, listings on Twitter and Minds and Freedoms Network and uh, the speaker.com show page. And I'll drop that off over here. Uh, and if you guys that uh, do these deals are uh, not doing it, then do it. Okay? There. Uh, yeah, well. Uh, yes, Vince. Now you can, you can, you can speak again. My wife was just re reminding me of something. Let's see, uh -huh. Vincent. I'm changing things back on the computer here. Leftovers. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. And I, what I started the rant about early in, in the show was hearing more of other people would be uh, interesting. But this isn't as easy to do for some folks as others. That's all. Me and you oh. are like a rarity. And then they get both of us together at the same time, even more rare. Well, I'm, uh, man, I'm fighting the, hitting the wall there. There's so much uh, complexity uh, and time requirement in doing what it is I'm trying to do here. And so that's why uh, I'm really glad for uh, uh, I've been to uh, come on and help. So I've got an idea how to do this better. But the uh, sound on that recording was way, le way low. So there's a few problems. What I'm thinking about is doing the broadcast uh, as normal um, and then if I can get uh, I've been over to uh, uh, team to uh, onto my computer and then for him to do the uh, uh, video part of it recording screenshot in my computer and then I'll take the audio file and uh, combine it with the uh, video file welcome and, to nerd chat with your yeah. host vincent easley and if that ben frees Elvis. me up from that process of trying to do all that edit i spent so much time this last week i, I didn't get anything too much uh zeroed out on that trying to um condense or or edit down and revise uh three hours into from notes to speaking trying to have this computer understand me and then it's like more time to try to do all the correction and stuff on that and uh it's a lot of lot of time that uh gets eaten up well you know what i would do if i was in a position that you just explained to me what sir uh i would go in search of somebody that had the experience in the field i was looking to did learn. that didn't i just tell you that about no, sound minds no. And all the promotion and good talk and uh, thumbs up I've been telling you about the feller. Oh, you do all that complicated. So I'm, I'm a man of a few words, <laughs> mister. I know. And they're usually the ones that are interrupting and you're not hearing what's being said. And that's your problem again. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't listen. It's a perfect world for me. I don't get it, Vinny. What's wrong? Well, that just sums up the uh, extent of the wow. world's problems right there. The world's problems yes. are based yep. on something I did. Okay. On your example. <laughs> My yes. example. Yeah. Then you should, you I, should be proud. I have very few personal problems, so I don't see how I, I could be the cornerstone of explaining the world's problems. I think you're making up a story there. Okay. Mr. Well, let me just go back and say it again. An yeah. example that perfectly yeah. is yeah. you just don't listen. <laughs> Well, if I did listen, do you think I would be where I'm at today? I don't think so. Wait a minute. That's not true because my inner circle of uh, people that I had you know, physical contact with, they agreed on the course that I was – that was leading, you know, things were going to. Well, you, so, fo you, followed, uh, you followed your heart. You followed through the proper vibrational frequency that brought you to where you're at, so – that yeah, part, really that part no, you did good at. 
Yeah, there's no other. The only other way to look at it is to have a huge ego and think that, ooh, I expected this is, you know, <laughs> my plan. <laughs> like Frankenstein, you know, oh, it's alive. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Tell me I don't listen, and then you go sit there and don't listen. I'm listening. I'm calling a foul on this. I'm also uh, busting up some of the good stuff. Oh, excellent. Because, yeah. hey, man, 90% I, I was going to give the uh, 420 report excellent. earlier, but I got high. <laughs> because I got high. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, but, hey, you know what? No. Do you know how many things there are that we don't really respect, but we pretend to respect them? Yes. Because if you don't respect them, the, the public will annihilate you. Well, I would say top of that li list is uh, would be licks, and that's uh, how many does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie 40, Pop. 42. And nobody has the patience to find out. 42. Uh, no, you're lying. Pr do 42 and tell me I'm wrong. And you have to do it on a video, one of those YouTube live links. I make about six or eight, and then I put in <laughs> a one. There you uh, go. <laughs> like the owl. Crunch. <laughs> That's too old. But see what advertising does? It does shit to us that we carry this shit forever. Mm. Well, except Vinny, who just muted and went away for a moment. Let's see. Now, I guess he'll be leaving me with things we do not really <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Welcome Wait. back, Coffinstein's mm. Monster. Yum. Oh, that's so to, delicious. To the dungeon with you, sir. <coughs> Yum. Excellent. See? Uh, and, hey, you know what? I still have a question nobody will ever talk to me about. Maybe you will. You ready for this here question? <coughs> Almost. Because I hear all this hoopla about legalizing cannabis for recreational purposes and medical purposes. When, what the fuck is it, you know, leave it alone. Why can't they just stop the prohibition and just leave people alone? Because uh, you, you're not, you know you're what? Not, you wait, you're not going to answer that. But wait, you're, let me say this too. You're, you're not going to get the the T, you know, to you're not going to get the CBD oil properties from the plant burning it in a joint or in a pipe. It's a whole nother process to get that response from the plant. So they're not even the same thing. <sighs> That's right. Well. I'm thinking people have this part of it confused with getting high, and it's got, it's the plant. The plant has this component to it that if you extract it from the plant, but not by burning it, but another form, then you get this result, and it gives you this oil that is incredible, <laughs> that uh, does things, no, that makes went, people you went, happy. You went from one thing to another thing, which is two I did? things. Yeah. Okay. Which one did I go to and from? Well, why, you know, why can't you just leave it alone, leave it as it is, but it is, it's not what it is, it's what, uh, or it's what it can it's do. Not, it's not what it was, it's what it is, and how do we get there, and mm. stepping through the, the ass-slinging department, uh, of course, and then, oh, uh, yeah. now, now, so what do we have now compared to what we did have, which is, was illegal in a Schedule One narcotic, so moving on to the state levels, and Yes, legalizing is bad, but it is at least a, a step away from the uh, the criminalization part of it. So what do we do next then is uh, move forward to a, a free to free the weed completely. What? And I see it well, as legal. A legal is better than than the illegal. Right, but it's still it's covering its tracks on on yeah, taking sure. any attention off. How did you get there in the first place? Well, so well we will be in this stage for a long time. We were eighty years. Hundred years, what? Yeah. In the last stage. So how yeah. long will we be in this stage? Well, too it goes long. To, to yeah. freeing, actually, you know, being of sound mind. Another promo, uh, and uh, knowing reality. How do you escape the Admiralty Court? This is ridiculous. Yeah, you, you can't hardly, and I've seen it, man. That yeah. once they yeah. get a hold of you, then yeah. oh, you're, it's over. You're, uh, yeah, yeah, you're pickled. Finished. 
Sure. So, how do you how do you get rid of that whole system? Well, it's I don't garbage. know, but I tell you, the main thing to do in the interim is to uh, stay out of their path and not um, pretty much make action, not make make words. Remember, guard your words. Yeah. Uh, people are are put in prison for the rest of their life just for words. For oh words yeah, I was telling you that Jerry over on Bitchute character, <clears throat> he he has some ideas. I think he's. I think he's very entertaining. He's a well, smart guy. A lot of these he's, people that have had, had ideas mm, uh, have led other people to their ruination and not to okay. their, their own. But the other side of that coin is the people that started this fucking USA thing in the first place. It don't matter. We're here. We're did we're exactly right, right. But they did exactly what I see other people trying to do in a verbal fashion. Because we have new tools. They're now have instant information. You can communicate all over the fucking planet at the same time. It's amazing, Vince. Yeah, I've been I seeing mean, it for, for, if, for years. You, and you know what? That what? is that is the factor. This is yeah. the first time in human history we've had yeah. this chance. And we can we can tip it tip it right. But what happens? They get up there and uh, uh, confuse the issue by people having infights. You got your uh, the, you know the extreme left to right and yeah. all and everything yeah. in between yeah well there isn't anything in between yeah there is what there is everything what is. there's nothing no. on the peripheral there's one end to the other i don't see it though i see it there's either or period there ain't no middle there's no there's no comfort zone you either you pick a side or you're cast out of the game you can't why would you want to play it in for I see I don't enjoy that game it so I don't play it. Therefore I got I guess titled anarchy which suits me just fine cuz the premise of anarchy is to do no harm. And I guess with the implied consent law thing that these butt nuggets use so <laughs> it doesn't matter if you speak up or you don't you're still stuck happen to go with the majority and most of the time I'm not interested in what the majority wants and people don't want to deal with things the way I think they should be dealt with they want to do them you know this vote unanimous and all that instead of let's try a realistic way and use what works best for everybody not just 19 percent you know 10 percent get 90 percent the rest of you people can fight over the what's left and we'll, you can call it a life. I mean, it's nothing more than uh, existence for most people. And I say that out of, uh, I've traveled a lot and met a lot of people that never did. Never been anywhere, didn't have any ambition to go anywhere, didn't do anything special. <laughs> just, wow. I, mean, I worked I in uh, with these boys in Monroe, Louisiana, and the, the oldest uh, brother, he was a world traveler. And he'd been... Uh, Clear up to Stamps, Arkansas, 113 miles. What up, Sid? You mean tell me you've flown up in one of them IR planes? I said, yeah. He said, you'd never get me in one of them IR planes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, different strokes. It depends on your upbringing, doesn't it? Well. I mean, where do you get your fears from? You know, do you think you just wake up with them one day and then boom, there they are? I think they're uh, developed out of. You. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a quick story why. All right, but I'll tell you where they come from first, from tears. Right, but this tears is the from tears. Right. Okay, this is the first re memory I have of this kind of a situation, and I was, I was either two or three, probably closer to three, right? And I got a younger brother, and me and my brother shared a room. And my uncle was visiting from his country, visiting my parents. So at night, we would go be put to bed first. And in the wintertime, it's dark like this, 5 o'clock in the evening, it's dark already. And whatever nighttime would come around, whatever bedtime was, 8 o'clock, it would be pitch black outside. My uncle would try to sneak around and scare us through the window. But my father would come in the room before that and go, your uncle is going to be outside the window trying to scare you. So he taught us that there's no real, if there is a boogeyman, it's a real person. It's not some made up shit. Don't, you know, pretending it's probably just your uncle out there banging on the window. Just know it. So 
I think these these kind of things stay, you know, they develop you as you grow up. So instead of us being afraid of the pounding on the window, thinking, ah, we already knew it was my uncle playing a, br- a joke on us. What so if, we uh, saw it then what if the next time somebody came around and was beating on the window, tapping, sneaking around? We'd get a grown-up. And it wasn't your uncle. Yeah, we'd go get a grown-up. My how, dad would be there. How old the co- Two, three years old. I have a Oh, little come on. You went two. You went two years Yeah, old. I was probably just about three. Really? Two, yeah, just before I was three. Yeah. What's your earliest memory? That's the one I'm thinking of. That's it? Because yes. my uncle was first in America. Yeah, I was real and, little. And two, tell me, why did you hate your mother? <laughs> you you remember that joke. That's a great joke. <laughs> I told that on the dork table one day. <laughs> With a partner. <laughs> anyway. So, life is just, it's chock full of dis- shit disguised as other shit. Right in you're, front of your face. You're chock full, buddy. You know, oh, you calling me a liar? No, Somebody else calls me that. What does that mean then? Are you Doc, insulting Doc, me? Doc. No. Uh, let's, let's see. What does Udi say? I Doc. don't know. Udi. Who's Udi? Oh, yeah, the definer thing he posts all the time, right? Uh, see, I'm learning all these tricky. Um, it's not a word. Geek, all these tricky Don't geek know. things are. Hey, I'm learning. Before long, I'll. Yeah, you'll you'll see. I'm gonna learn how. To, I'm gonna master the interwebs. No, there's the top. Um, it's my goal. I'm gonna be the master. I have my cult with there my great is. following, and I will be the master of the internet. <laughs> it's perfect. Look. What? Chock full. You got to be chock full. Chock you full. You have to have value to offer. And if ah. you're if you're not chock full, then you have no value, right? Well, what does the government offer you to be a member of their gang? <laughs> they pay me. How? Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, but <laughs> what other? Okay, what other uh, perks are there to being a member of that particular gang? It's fun. <laughs> and it's fighting. <laughs> Being a bully is fun and exciting. Wow. <laughs> okay. And what's your most uh, s- self-fulfilling experience from bullying people around because you're exceptional? Because <laughs> they cry like little babies. That's why. Like a little <laughs> two or, or three-year-old <laughs> flash where the uncle's outside beating on the window saying, boo. <laughs> and, no, not beating on And them. Uncle just, Daddy's already there to save you. Try, yeah, Don't yeah. be afraid of the boogeyman. Yeah, it's really just your your it's uncle. Just yeah. the noise in your head. It's no beating oh, under no. the bed. No monster in the closet. Wow. You had well, one of those weird upbringings. Were, no, no, no. were, were you raised by wolves? No. No? I knew a guy I had to nickname that. Hmm. Raised by wolves. Yeah, that's what I called him. I didn't do it all, all day That's long, a long but. name. See, you need to work on shorter names. Like Flash Somebody. You got to type all of Flash Somebody and then capitalize the F and the S. It's a lot of work hmm. in that. I know that. You're very selfish. I don't want to be popular. I want to be understood. Nobody's going to understand it, so there's no popularity that's going to ever go with it. But, you know, it's nice. People like to be liked. I'm not insane, but I'm just not expecting, you know. Why? I've always been on the outside of the crust on my uh, <clears throat> my thinking. as a lighter. As a carbon-based life form on planet Earth. I think I'll call you Tootsie. Short, short for Tootsie Pop. You like to be liked and lit. Yeah, but I think I think that people are taught to... Uh, they're taught to respond to things in ways that really don't have anything to do with what they think they have to do with. Yeah. And when you try to explain that, they're being misdirected. Eh, it just starts arguments and misunderstanding and so it's not really worth pursuing but it's a good point on the radio maybe with you because you're not totally insane you're only a little bit insane like me you know just enough to make it interesting but not so much that you know i'm building a spaceship in my backyard on the weekends hey we could do it no we can't that's Mm -hmm. a bunch of crap please we we couldn't all right you think about this 
Well, while you're up there in your spaceship for two weeks, where do you take a shit? You got to put it back in a bag and then dehydrate yeah. it, crumble okay. it up. Okay, how how many bags are you Add taking bag. with you? For, okay, how many bags are you taking with you through this extravagance? Well, you, you got to compost it back into your growing okay. medium. Okay, well, okay, then you got to drink. You water. never had a shit house tomato, have you? I'm talking about the size of your spaceship, butt nugget. No. Then after your shit bags, you need. Well, a, I don't have. I'm not going to build one. I I was only teasing. Yeah. yeah. Let me stop. Oh you. no so no no no! Don't go no further. You've committed yourself. Uh, no, this. I have not. Hey, yeah, matter of yeah. fact, I'm going to bug out an hour early and leave it with you. <clears throat> Why? Because I have something else to do. Really? What's her name? I'm not telling you. you is her name? <laughs> Then your business. <laughs> then your business. Yeah. All right. See you later, Wasco. Oh, I'll say goodbye. Oh, oh, you got somebody picking you up? Yeah. Goodbye. Hey, but you got to do it now. It's the top <laughs> of the hour. Say hello to everybody in chat. Hey, Barman, Beetle, Cowboy Tech, Grimnir, Moose Girl, Miss Kate, DC Brackets, Anti Asmo, Chloe. Chalcedony Circle, hey, honey. Chloe again, me, Gooberzilla, Graham Z, I B Don C, J Dread, Meister Brow, Pox Fight, Pox Phone Rain, RLM Fluke, Rob Works, Rums, Vin Elvis, a hey, happy birthday. Yeah, thank you very much. Phantom, Cyborg Noodle, Dakota, Frumpy, Gromit, Java Doctor, Two J's, Nines J's. Kozu, mmm, Nensen Dubois, Pox Home Ponsas, Sock Puppet, Skittle, and Van Meter. <coughs> hey, Donna. And Dan yeah, Don Donna showed up when we were already on. Way back. Uh huh. All right, She's thanks, been everybody. Thanks, Flash. Chatting. I, I you leaving? You guys. Yeah, I'm off. Okay. Hasta las huegos, and Mr. Pasta. Thanks a lot, Vinny, for thanks. showing up. All right, talk See to you. See you Saturday. Yeah, oh, bye, wow. bye, bye, bye. Well, we just lost half of the show. Anybody want to come on and replace him? <clears throat> I've got my wire open. Let me know if you're in the mood to chat. Otherwise, um, let's see. Oh, well, I brought up a couple of funny things with Vinny, but he might not be familiar with who I'm talking about. But, yeah, Jer uh, Jerry. Jerry. And he's visible on BitChute, and beyond BitChute, I wouldn't know how to find the guy. But his links are entertaining. He's got a great way to explain his ideas. Now, like most of us on the radio, we're you got to be a little bit full of yourself in the first place to even put what your ideas are on film, I think. I've gotten to that point. You know, we're not a bunch of wallflowers, the group that does the radio. So, but then there, then there's like levels of it. And this Jerry guy, he takes an idea and he researches it to the core of whatever there is to find. And he's doing some very uh, deep-rooted things like the water tables. Hey, it got me real interested in it. Enough to listen to his stuff. So if you're interested in any of this Jerry crap I've been commenting on, he's on BitChute, just like we are. Go over there and go, hey, Jerry, hmm, what have you got to say? And you might like it. Now, I'm not all about what's popular, because what's popular is the problem that's, that's what the problem we have today is, what's popular. Everybody likes it. Well, you got to consider the mind of the person that likes the thing that might not be so good for you. And some of us don't give a shit. <laughs> I used to not give a shit. When I was younger, I didn't know there was anything to give a shit about how the world worked. Where I didn't think to I didn't think ahead enough to expect to be here now. <laughs> and now that I'm here, so now I'm looking for, wait a minute, I'm in this sinking boat, you know. I wonder if I could bail out some of the water long enough until the, the real repair guys come in here and fix it. And, wow, the doomsday things are, they're still coming. We've been seeing those ever since I was 10 years old. 
the end is nigh, the collapse is near, and they prop it up and they do it some more. But perhaps we may be coming to the end of the, uh, they might be running out of numbers to dazzle people with. I mean, if they're trading five, <laughs> the five biggest banks of the world <laughs> are trading five trillion dollars a day. Okay. Now, there, there's only seven billion people. And then out of that seven billion, there's only a few of the these people that are actually doing this five trillion dollars a day in trading. Mm. So it's probably like the same ten people making all the money, <laughs> and then and then you have the population that doesn't understand what money is because we we all use cards, plastic, electricity. I'm telling you. Gold will always be gold, but these these games that we play with finance, no, they can be ended. All you got to do is shut the electricity off, and you bring a freaking civilization to its to its knees. It's going to be going, please take your throat and take your throat. <laughs> please take your foot off my throat. It hurts. That That's what I see. So. How do you stay out of a situation that would appear to look that way? <laughs> I I have no idea, but I'm not one of the people that looks around at my fellows and complains. Quite the opposite. In fact, got a got a uh, a win story to talk about tonight. Because when I first got here, there's a, a neighbor down the road. By I have to pass by his home all the time. Can't go past without passing him, and he didn't for the because I'm American, didn't for the world like me. <laughs> and he just recently, the last month or so, he's been, um, for years, he's been going down, uh, associating with this group that hangs out at the train. And the last month, he's been very civilized to me on purpose. <laughs> so it, it was kind of nice for him to not, you know, be drunk and yelling at me this time. Because he did that a few times. And, you know, he's riding a bike yelling something at me in Danish. But uh, I don't think he meant it. I don't think it was important. I didn't take offense. I was just very uncomfortable around him because, like, you know, hey, man, you're drawing all this attention. Stop that. And it, I waited long enough, and he did. And he's a civilized guy. We pass each other on the way to the store now. He waves at me. So, uh I would consider that a social win. I never wanted to fight with anyone. You know, it's beyond. I'm fifty fucking nine, so punching on other people is stupid. <laughs> Even if I win, what what would I I what would I look like beating up on a twenty year old? Because you know I've been around. I know how to do all that shit. So I'm not intimidated by youth and size and all that. Because I got experience and. Avoiding all that. <laughs> but it still, yeah, it crosses my mind because mostly because of the movies. Hey, bye, Donna. Uh, most of the movies and shit I watch make me think that everybody's a kung fu master. They're all armed. 50 fucking guns and <laughs> knives. <laughs> Bunch of ninjas. They can do mir miracle flips. Run for a half a mile and not get sweaty or move, your hair don't move. <laughs> movies <laughs> anyway in a perfect world and Vinny bailed on me tonight and what in the world do I have on my pea brain that would interest the group at the Real Liberty Media which <laughs> it's not as easy to do as it sounds you think hey they're just a bunch of chatters in a room yeah but they've got a lot of curious little interests like uh Oh, fractional reserve banking. <laughs> Some smart people. Rob Works knows about the shit, too. I'm not the only one. Rob's done some radio. I thought Rob's, uh, f well, few attempts because he didn't really pursue it anywhere, but he did some good stuff. Like to rerun your shit. We should have a rerun day. You know, and highlight past shows that were uh, considered really good by the RLM group give them a lot of support maybe we should do something like that maybe not I don't know but it is the new year 
And what do you normally do in the new year is it, uh, look at the old year and go, hey, that, that was a drag. I'm glad that's over. <laughs> now, me, nah, I keep wondering where all the years are coming from. You know, it's like, it, it, maybe it, I've tried to disavow time, but my wife, she won't let me have that. I've been nice about it. She still insists, and she does it through other things besides her like pick me up at the train because the train only operates at a certain time so wait a minute now I'm back on a clock <laughs> so I do my you know I do my Jew thing where I'm not pleased with the clock thing but I do the the uh, the action but the reason behind the time thing is you know, it makes a slave out of me for that because you got to watch this clock and, you know, if you don't want to stand waiting like a butt nugget, leave at this particular exact time and it takes this t amount of time to get to it and boom, there she'll be. But, I don't know, sometimes I'm impatient, I think, and I don't wait long enough and I end up a few minutes before her and it gets a little brisk in the winter time, so my fingers get cold and the dog's all like, anxious to see her. So, so, you know, when um, everything around you is just chaotic and it's contained chaotic, but it's still, you got a dog jumping on a leash and you got a wife you haven't seen all day and all this stuff is, and then people walking by and everything's happening. And if you just wait one minute, it all, <laughs> it all passes and it stops again. But to this day, my age now, I still, for that time where it's all chaotic, I I feel the chaos, and never never have I felt comfortable in uh, more than two or three people kind of thing. I always notice that, you know, different opinions bring friction. And like Vinny was teasing me about on telling Mary to quit being sick, because you yeah, had the vibrations and this vibrations and the those vibrations, and then we have my indoctrination. <laughs> And it's so hard to even take things that I accept as real seriously at this point, because I think I survived all these years just not, not taking all this shit too serious. Because uh, at one point I did, and that was a mistake. So I went, uh, well, we'll try the other side of the coin, see how that plays out, and that turned out to be the answer. So I had, you know, like half a life. I lived one one way. And then half a life to this point, almost, where I'm living a completely different way. And it seems to work. Whatever it is, but it's not your traditional, you know, uh, obey society kind of crap. Uh, I bend as many rules that I could bend that didn't directly hurt anybody else bending that I could. And people say I was lucky, and I say I was skilled because I was taught by people that were really good at what they did to do the things that I did, like drive a car. My father taught me how to drive a car. That man not only could drive the damn car, but take the car apart outside the house, and if he wanted to, rebuild it inside the house. So I didn't uh, question. I didn't question his authority, you know, because he was a tyrant. For one, but the other is he could back up his mouth. If he said it would happen, it happened, and it didn't matter what it was. It, if he said so, boom. So the thing you didn't want from my father was silence, because <laughs> if there was no answer, that meant there's no answer. You'll get one or you won't. But it ain't happening right now. Leave me alone. And that's you know to be that absolute and that well read at the same time, that takes some uh, discipline. You know, so as much of the outside of the box thinker I've turned out to be, the parental attempt was to control. <laughs> but he raised me to not be controlled. So he kind of created a Frankenstein's monster at, at the time. I, I look back at it and see that it was like an experiment in terror, you know, to see what he could do with this life form. And he was half right. He did he did half of what he tried to do, and then society went, "Hey, this is what's really going on." I because I'd met people that wouldn't lie to me, 
And not like my father knew he was lying, but the things that the, you know, the get a job and be somebody thing was dead by the time I was old enough to pursue it. And he didn't realize that for another well, a good four years. He, he gave up in 82. And <laughs> I think he finally realized it. Went, wow. Because, you know, he was born and raised in America and had all that luxury and progress come his way, so to speak. You know, starting out from where he started out to where he went. And then, uh, you know, it's all a matter of interpretation. Because I'm not, not claiming to be wealthy, but comfortable. And comfort, I don't know, that's, it's, I know a lot of people with money that, well, I did in the past, and they weren't very comfortable people. So, you know, and what I learned out of all my experiences that I've collected is, you know, um, if you're not happy, it ain't got nothing to do with them. Because <laughs> <laughs> the unhappy person is the one that's unhappy. Nobody can make me unhappy. I can blame them for it because it pissed me off, right? Like my wife, I could do that to her. Oh, you made me feel this way and you made me feel that way. And I could probably even justify it because she's my wife. I married her for crying out loud. I must obviously care what she thinks. And a part of me cares about what she thinks. And then there's this other part of me that doesn't. And it's not like a negative or a... It just, honestly speaking... No, what what different? It's just another opinion. When you get all rational and you look at the truth about shit, no, she's just another person. But she's your wife, and you got you. You can't be honest and open twenty four hours a day with anybody. You get your butt kicked in this life. So there's times you just got to be nicer than you really are. <laughs> and I don't do very well, but I try. And, you know, I think uh, the people that are the closest to me. They understand. Uh, they understand what I am, or whatever it is they see in it, in me, from their own perspective, right? And it's not from a radio conversation. These things we do on the radio, most of them are uh, for fun, have a laugh, you know, expose the government for what it truly is. And if you don't know, well, this is a good place to learn it. And if you already know, just. Uh, what do they call it? Reinforcement. You know, like, uh, it's like telling the wife, um, oh, that was a wonderful dinner. You know, I, I don't have that ability. I think it, but I'm not much, you'd think because I do this radio crap that in person, I would be as flamboyant with words as uh, in person, but I'm not. I don't think. I think in person, uh, I kind of shut down and don't have much to say, but that's, that's me. I'm, uh, see, you, I think I see myself one way, but then I got all these things show up in life. Like Mary, I met Mary on a world truth and she was doing radio and I thought that's a lot of fun. And I hung around with her on the radio where you couldn't hear what I was saying, but I could talk to her. <laughs> it was terrible. I would tell her terrible jokes while she was talking <laughs> and she would laugh and people would know what she was laughing about. Cause I would do it when she was talking about something serious and, uh, Anyway, that turned into the dork table where she actually partnered up with me for a while. And we're missing Miss Mary because she has uh, some kind of a, I guess, flu or she sounded really, I talked with her Saturday for a bit on the wire with a group. It wasn't just me. And boy, I didn't recognize her voice. <laughs> Jeez. I hope she's better. I'm not laughing at you, Miss Mary. It's just, wow, what a change. I didn't even know it was you. It's almost embarrassing after I spent so much time talking to you. But, just another person, you know. Do the best we can with what we got. But we are in a perfect world, you know. And Vinny doesn't think so, but I think it is. And that would probably have something to do with... Uh, it's not your world that's perfect. It's it's my world. <laughs> Yours, not so much. Kind of fucked up. You know, you're using the wrong fuels. Uh, you're doing yourself a lot of harm following a lot of liars. You're being deceived in ways that logically don't make sense. Why would the government do these things? No, you must be wrong. And all the things that are happening were designed to be answered that way. <laughs> it's... 
it's insane. It's like um, watching a film that doesn't really have a specific ending. It can end 15 different ways. But they're all bad. <laughs> so you don't want it to end. It just continues every day. It's a, another day of this movie, maybe. Maybe not. Some people think it's real. And some people not so much. It's kind of an interesting way to uh, explain what you see because I don't think I see what you see. I don't think Vinny and me see the same exact thing the same exact way ever about nothing. But whatever we do see, uh, we find a, a common ground for it at, through the arguing and the bickering. And my favorite one is I don't listen. Oh, man, I die laughing when he says that. Because if I hadn't listened, how would I know that Rockefeller medicine is actually bad for me? Or that inoculations are deadly? Or hmm, fractional reserve banking is <laughs> it's a reality? You know, these these things wouldn't come to me if I didn't listen to people. But it's funny is because he likes to stir up the arguing shit and, you know, make a point. Because, yeah, Vinny's a little bit more dramatic than me. I like the voices and carrying on with somebody else, but I'm not as, uh, I don't think I'm as concerned about being remembered for what I said. Nah, I'd rather that you remember what I said than who I am, because that doesn't matter. We're going to go through life quoting all these things that we're told that weren't true anyway. And some of us in our lifetime are never going to find out that it wasn't. You know, they're going to believe the lie. Yeah. And, well, it's hard not to be thought of as kind of uppity with an opinion like that about things that, you know, make people feel involved in this society crap that it's all a bunch of bullshit when you really cut it down you know i mean unless you're traveling every day and you're going places and you're in paris on monday and you're in berlin on tuesday and you're in australia on thursday what the hell do you care about the rest of the fucking world in the first place now what i found out about it for me was miss b's down in australia so i like to i like to associate with her every now and again well that that's different than being physically there. But with the technology that we have, we can simulate it. <laughs> and I know I'm the one that harps on simulations are, are bad for us. And they truly are. And this is probably just another one of them that truly is. But it exists. And we're going to use this because it's what's there. So we'll just find the best way to use the tools available. And, you know, whether they're bad for us or not, they're going to play off that shit. You know, global warming. What was the other one? Greenhouse gases. Oh, man. Grim, Grim was just uh, laughing his butt off on the, the lack of education amongst the younger people that they can manipulate an idea like that and take them to an area that it can't possibly really be global warming and man-made on top of it all. And... There, who's judging this? Nobody. Some guy started a rumor and it caught on. And it did that because Hollywood, oh man, Hollywood gave him uh, some kind of Oscar award or some bullshit to justify his movie about global climate, whatever it was. I never even saw it. I wouldn't listen to two words Al Gore says unless I accidentally tripped upon them. And then I'll listen and then I'll go, oh, it's Al Gore, goodbye. <laughs> not not a man that I would look up to but you got to remember the school systems and the movies have had these kids learning this trivial shit that's a bunch of crap <laughs> it's, it's all based on absolute rubbish and exaggeration <laughs> and in the long run I don't know who's going to pay for it pay, who's paying the bill for this one I heard <laughs> who was going on a bit uh, Grimner <laughs> they're gonna crash the damn global debt <laughs> they want their money <laughs> so who gets paid the global debt you know 
the Rockefellers or Rothschilds or the Bushes, the Clintons. And I have read enough crap about the Clintons stealing money. They're already rich people, right? Then they get into politics, become richer people. Then that's not enough. They got to sell drugs and steal money. And it, I mean, after a while, it's just these stories start to sound to me like distraction just to keep me away from things that matter. Because <laughs> I don't give a shit about Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton or Obama or Trump. or But I would say I care about Miss B down under because I've spoken to Miss B and, you know, we have a history. But uh, Trump? What the fuck do I know about Donald Trump? You know, besides, he was a bully. <laughs> he, he wanted to build everything and sells his name and uh, what what a bullshit world we live in in my opinion you know because these things hold no physical attraction i i don't know maybe they grab you by your mental nuts or trump's a big success and all if you go and look no he wasn't he was related to money (laughs) his uncle john was a very very bad man in the tesla world I guess in a perfect world, Tesla is a good topic because uh, what the story about John Trump is, he was the last known person to enter the building that the papers were in. And then they all disappeared. And years later, you know, as years rolled on, he started patenting things, but they were through other people. (laughs) Clever little deceptions. But traced back to the day that he managed to find the magic documents. Now, here's my bit of grief with this whole government thing. Is when whatever topic I look at, and it, it has anything to do with government, it always ends in, look at the shitty, nasty garbage that these lying thieves do. And these are supposedly the elected leaders, and you're stuck with them. You voted for them. They have support. Well, I don't support this, right? So by not supporting it, by being a not non-voter, because I think both parties equally suck, I think that both of the choices equally suck, and, well, if I'm going to go to get sucked, I'm not going to go to a politician to do it. <laughs> That's where you're supposed to go have a good time, not, you know, lose all your money. (laughs) I don't, I have my weird childish way of looking at authority, I suppose. But to me, it just looks like a vending machine, you know. You stick your quarter in, and sometimes it works, and sometimes you got to tilt the whole damn machine to get your your thing because it got stuck coming out. you got to have some kind of insider knowledge to know that you can tip the machine over. This is how complicated life's gotten over since I was a child. The things that I grew up with that were normal, like riding a bike and falling down and swimming and uh, going outside into the woods or to the desert, all these normal things are now dangerous. And there's 57 million movies to tell you why. It's not a good idea to go to the woods. And if you go to the woods, you should be armed and terrified. Because you know what's in the woods? Psychos. And the woods are fucking huge. But you know what? The part of the woods that you go to, there's going to be a haunted house. (laughs) Some demons, some poachers. Um, If you go rock climbing, there's going to be people up there waiting for you to push you off. (laughs) It's just... The most insane things happen in movies that in real life, uh, if you've ever been outdoors, it's fucking huge. And how do you keep tripping over each other? It's really big. I I don't know how to tell you this, but if you're tripping over people, I think it's because you want to. (laughs) Because even I can walk around here in this little place and not run into other people. There are lapses in the time where people walk that may not be very much, but compared to uh, the society sizes I've come from, 
this is a lot smaller <laughs> so I tend to like it a little better and uh, I, the big treat at the grocery tonight was uh, the kid behind the counter was swamped he had a bunch of shit going on and they got two cash registers and one of them they generally they sell the pastries but they'll they'll take your you know if you go over there they'll take your cigarette order well the girl saw me waiting and she asked me if I wanted my cigarettes and uh did the yeah and was asking me to so I wouldn't have to wait <laughs> I thought wow that was pretty cool and uh little see these little tiny things that uh you can dismiss them if you want if you want to but made my day because I got out of that store just you know because that's what I do I go there to do business and leave I don't go there to linger as long as I can <laughs> that's not the point of the mission and uh, get home with my you know necessary provisions and do whatever I need to do but the niceties in the middle uh, I think being as I wasn't concerned with them where I come from, maybe I took them for granted because not speaking a language will definitely make you aware of when people are being nice to you because you hear it in your own language and you don't recognize it in theirs until you learn what it means. And it's very interesting the transition. I ran into somebody tonight, yesterday, was it? Might have been t yesterday, I think it was yesterday. I was waiting in line. And uh, it was taken forever. I think it was yesterday. And we know each other from the bar, but in the public, we weren't going to mention that. We were just friendly. But we're speaking in English in a grocery store. And what the conversation was basically about was, came down to, well, I really don't like to go down there all that much because I prefer in the, in the daytime where I can sit out in the sun. And uh, outside of that, you know, I'm locked inside. It's not quite the same. But she did mention, eh, you're welcome to come down there any time. So being reminded of that, you know, is pleasant. It's not like, hey, you know, I'm glad, I'm sorry I ran into you. She noticed me first, and if she was behind me, so if she hadn't spoken, I wouldn't know she was there. That's a matter of blind plus uh, not concerned, you know, or uh, I'm not looking for people to notice me. So when they do, I'm as surprised of it as they are that I'm there because it's usually that two two of us are crossing paths in a grocery store or at the liquor store where it's just not likely that you know somebody that's using the same building at the exact same time which is like the guy I don't like he's usually there or around there somewhere close so I'm likely to run into him but other people not so much because a pretty spread out little place and I think the comfortability has definitely softened my uh, my physical life. You know, I got my radio life where I have these opinions and ideas about things. And I got my physical life where I have to interact with people and they don't need to know all this. I mean, why would I tell them anyway? And how would you explain, you know, the years of uh, what's built up to where we are with what we know? <laughs> Poor Rob works. Because I understand. I mean, you get to a point in life where things are so black and white. Why doesn't everybody else get it? And I'm still justifying they're not getting what we claim to not want, <laughs> but are stuck with too. Um, hmm. Maybe it's the frame of mind that you see it defines the words that you use to live with it. You know? Like... George Carlin was great. Fuck, he was a funny man, but he was more or less doing a lot of complaining, you know, and telling people what he really thought of their shit after everything <laughs> was said and done. And he did it in a, in a fuck you kind of fashion, too. <laughs> Just say fuck you. He had words for people with names of stuff that I don't usually bring up on the radio cuz specific topics of a negative eh, I don't usually have an opinion George did <laughs> George looked at everybody the same and I think he th I think he thought we were pretty much idiots as a whole <clears throat> it didn't seem that George Carlin was impressed with the humans wonder why 
And he made fun of everybody and everything over what? How many years was he around from the 60s? So I think the first thing I saw him do was in 68. So from 68 to 2000 and what, three or four before he died. That's a long time. Ooh. So, but in that period of time, he went from uh, trying to be accepted to fuck everybody. And he went to Congress and pretty much spoke the truth and didn't live long after that. So that, you know, it was a, what was a writer's, like a writer's uh, ceremony thing. You know, they recognized Carlin, Congress did. And he went on there and he spoke for like an hour, hour and a half. For he can't remember the time on it. But when he come out of it, it was like, wow, <laughs> did you say that? And <clears throat> whether these people listened or not, we did. Not all of us. Like, I've heard Mary say, oh, yeah, George Carlin was joking. Well, I never thought George was joking. I thought George was funny in his delivery. But joking? No. The seven words you cannot say on TV. And you, I still think they bleep them out on the public TV in America. They don't bleep out stuff on TV here, do they, sir? No. Here they've got open air. Kids, grown-ups, uh, they don't think that you can hurt people with words, colorful words. Do not scare the average Dane. You have to probably bring a gun or maybe a big knife, maybe Bruno and Scott, you know, to scare a Dane. That you need something, because words ain't gonna do it. And these people, punk, wow, they've got sharp sarcasm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. wouldn't you say, sweetheart? <laughs> oh, wife of mine. <laughs> oh yeah, man. My favorite one is my sister-in-law. She'll do it in English for me, so I get. I get to understand, you know, what she says. And it, it, it's a, a bizarre relationship because in Denmark, they don't talk to you rudely if they don't like you. <laughs> it's like, no, they only say that shit to people that they like because if you said that to people you don't like, you'd be punching each other in the face. <laughs> Some people are very sensitive about words. Did you know that? Some people need to be right. I don't want to be one of those people. I've decided, you know, I'm going to start my cult. Just give me a little more time. But yeah, I'm going to start my cult. I'm going to lead them to the promised land. <laughs> to salvation. And I figured out where it's at, too. <laughs> It's a David Carradine movie. It's called uh, um, Circle of Iron. And it's this really weird. You know, David Carradine was kind of funny, but he did a lot of these uh, kung fu -y, gooey kind of movies with uh, deep meanings. And he did this thing where he plays the blind man prophet. And the guy goes through all these quests to get to this book at the end of the movie so you've sat through like an hour and a half or two hours or whatever it is of this film and the whole fucking point of the movie is to get to this book and inside the book is a mirror <laughs> the answer is in you so you you came all this way to find out you already were where you were going and that's how life really works to me I don't know if other people are going to agree with that, but you just end up looking at yourself when you find the answer. If you're pleased with it, of course. I mean, I guess if you have self -lo what is that? self loathing and you don't like your own reflection and your own voice and all those kind of crazy ideas, uh, then that, that wouldn't be an answer. That would be the end. But, you know, to a mind like mine, I suppose... That would just be the truth. Because, I mean, I can blame you all day and all night about what I don't like and what went wrong and all these horrible, shitty things. But what did you do? <laughs> Grimner did it! <laughs> I'll blame Grim. Uh, he was the bad fellow. Hey, I could blame Rob, too. And they're both far enough away. I don't have to worry about them getting to me. <laughs> Popping me in the nose for lying. But, 
you know, that's what it would be. It would be, you know, to blame Grimm or um, Rob Works at this point in my life over what they think. Please say grown men, they can think anything they please. Then we got this internet thing, right? We can type whatever crazy ideas we have, type them right there. And you can either pay attention or you cannot. And some, I'm funny like that. Some people just, I don't know. After a while, I'm not amused. And then other people, I go, I don't like in a loop. I go through the loop with one one person where he's funny one day and then for a couple of days, not so much. And I just don't pay attention. And then something will make me laugh and then he's funny again. I don't know how to explain that. But I'm not talking about Vinny. <laughs> Vinny's more like a, I don't know, kind of a half-ass radio partner when he's around. Because he loves to do the radio. And he is a funny, he's funny in a way that is very singular. He's not Carlin hysterical funny. It's more like he has a way with words. He's developing this thing with words. And he uses us to practice on <laughs> So we're we're like part of an experiment that Vinny's doing, and some of it's funny to more than us than others, I would suppose. Now me, I'm still, I'm still laughing. Um, it's it's kind of hard for some folks to get on to the radio at all, you know. So I think that the few of us that do it, meh, criticizing what we do. That that's just gonna bring rain, but some people are gonna do that. Be critical. What do you call them? Um, sticks in the mud. Say bad, mean, horrible things. And all it can really boil down to in the long run was what Vinny and and Rob agree on, is the the brain waves and the wavelengths, these vibrations and all this crap. These two guys spent more time. Uh, investigating it, I would say, and with it in their life than I have yet. So I'm still in my infancy. You know, I dabble in it here and there. But I got a wife and a dog and interests uh, all over the place about other things that consume a lot of time. So I really can't, you know, I'm not interested anymore in learning more stuff. You know, I think I'm I'm happy with my opinions about medicine, money, uh, the future of carbon-based life forms. Because <laughs> if you say mankind, you're going to insult somebody. And I want to be inclusive. I want everybody <laughs> to listen to my opinion and join my cult. And I'll lead you to the book. <laughs> or you can just go look in the mirror and cut out the middleman. It's up to you. But... I mean, you know, if you're going to follow somebody, why not follow me? And I'll lead you to the mirror. And then I'll go, hey. That's pretty much what I do. <laughs> it's, it's how I see people. Um, whatever I'm doing is pretty much my version of a reflection of what I see in you. Whoever you are. So if you have an opinion about my text, it's the way that you interpret it. And in the long run, it really like me it has nothing to do with me what you write unless i read it so if i don't read it <laughs> it's a fun game i don't know why i like to play it uh, <clears throat> i might be having fun now and that's a sick a sick thought but yeah and i was talking about that uh hundredth monkey story and the coincidence of coincidences, because if you listen to Jerry, me and Cirque sat here one day, and she says to me, because uh, I play bit shoot, and she goes, hey, I wonder what that Jerry guy's got to say. So I played a whole shitload of his links all back to back, to back. and in one of his links, he, he brings up that 100th monkey story, and he takes it a step further. He says, there was something about the story that, well, I was curious. I wanted to know the background of the guy that wrote this, wrote the story. So he did, and he says, and he's uh, under suspicion for suspicious behavior because of other links to other writings. <laughs> so 
So that's the kind of mind Jerry's got compared to me. I mean, analytical. He went behind the, the question to see who wrote, who wrote what to start with and found it to be hmm, suspicious in his words. I'm trying to repeat what he said, but hmm, the way I interpreted what he said, he didn't trust the original writer. Therefore, but it sounded like I'd heard the tape and then, wow, hey, sir, think of this. But the reality of it was I hadn't heard him say that. I thought of it my on my own time wave, my own length, wavelength or whatever. And I think we all do that kind of shit all the freaking time. But with, we've been conditioned with this patent and timing and, man, there's so many freaking of us. It can't be that unlikely to have the same idea about the same thing that's so freaking obvious in the first place. Because <laughs> it's a wonderful story, but when I thought about it you know, and really sat down, I don't know, I think it was Grimner was talking about it. It might have been me and Mary. Well, it was something from the RLM. might have been me, might have been them. But it got my attention somehow where I started to think, well... Maybe that's not really possible. Because <laughs> I believe a lot of other things that are possible but don't happen, like freeing the weed. Uh, and then there's other things that don't seem possible that are very possible, like a guy going to prison for life because he owned some plants. You know, whatever. A lot of plants. But still, just a... You know, a way for these thieves to get away with locking up the competition. Because you're, if you're doing commerce without the approval of the state, whoa, they can't get taxes. <laughs> they want their fingers up everybody's ass. And it's justified by, well, they got a black market. Well, no, it's not justified. You know what there ain't in the black market? A tax structure. <laughs> And uh, word of mouth sets a price, but money talks and bullshit, well, there you go. So just because a man wants a certain amount of money for a certain amount of something, that nothing binds you to that. There's no laws to protect you from negotiating, but you try that at Walmart. You know, Walmart says something is on sale for 20% off. Well, yeah, they doubled the price and they took 20% off <laughs> on sale. There's a few people with the experience, uh, in it just ingrained in them, like Grim, Grim Rob Works, the group, you know, the insiders uh, to the, the free thinking kind of thing. I don't know. They call it uh, critical thinking. I think it goes way beyond that into some kind of wavelength that draws you to it, because there's a lot of stuff that goes on on uh, in in a chat room. That doesn't interest people. You know, it's not for every line of text. isn't for every person. Some of us chitter-chatter among <laughs> little groups. <laughs> it's funny. Um, but it's a nice... It's a lot nicer than having a bar fight. Just, you know, disagreeing with somebody about a, a political system is different on the Internet than it is in person. Because in person, people... In my history, looking on to them, they have taken this political shit so to heart that it physically affects their behavior, and they act out. And then they start to yell. And you know what a mob does? It grows. And you can make a mob. Just you know, start doing something, and people will follow you. And they'll start doing it too. So, the thing that I started to try to do I don't know how to do it with radio because this is a lot of fun and a lot of nonsense and a lot of serious, all thrown at the wall, see what sticks. But in real life, you know, do no harm. And uh, that's about as much as I think I can do, you know. Um, and it's not as hard to accomplish as I once thought it was because it's so overcrowded. Too many people makes me uncomfortable. Now, maybe that's just me, but I'm starting to wonder. I think um, being alone or being with just one other person puts you in a space that is kind of unique. You know, it's 
Hmm. It's easier for some than others to spend their time by their self and not feel, uh, in, the, in the long run, some, some kind of alienation from the herd. That's my observation of looking at other people. Oh, I missed you. Oh, I, wow. I'm sorry. I when I think of like when my wife goes to work, sometimes I come to sit down at the computer and I make a little comment or send her a link or something. Um, the last couple of months with the internet and uh, eh, I flaked off on it. I don't pay so much attention to her on it, but. I still do. I still, you know, during the day, I wonder what Cirque's up to. And then two seconds later, the phone will ring. Or it yesterday, it vibrated on the table. But I was sitting at the table it was on, or I wouldn't have noticed and missed the phone call. So there's some kind of a wavelength that I get on with other people that brings our timing together, you know, where we, we don't miss each other when we're looking and it could be on the internet, but if I'm not sitting in front of it, I don't see it. So the phone call, that was even weirder because my phone, I don't know how to use this damn phone properly, and I turned off the ringer. And with that, we're going to end my ranting nine cents of In a Perfect World and get on with the new week coming up. We got tomorrow, we got, hopefully, Miss Mary will be back. I heard her Saturday. She didn't sound good, but we're looking for her to come back tomorrow on Friday, uh, Wednesday night, and then uh, at a regular time. You all know what a time she is, comes on. And then on Thursday night, I do my thing 20% off at midnight my time on Thursday. Um, my little attempt at being serious on purpose, not the dork table or in a perfect world where 50% of it is just having fun. Uh, but it, you know, 20% off, I, I'm pretty sure it proves that if uh, if you give me a microphone that in two hours I can convince you I'm 20% off whatever the average is because mm, I see things a little bit different than the average bear. There you go. And then on Friday, we got Miss Mary with a rocket chair on Friday before the Moose Girl and Grimner do the Freakers Ball. Then on Saturday, I do a dork table with whoever pops up. It's been Vinny lately, but uh, yeah, Saturday I had a blast. And then Sunday, we got Grimner um, doing the blues, then he's doing the trivia, and then Hal Anthony behind the woodshed comes on. And then Monday night, Grimner started a new thing. He's like done three. So and we've got him to an hour and he's doing really good. Just rehashing. He calls it Grimm's Leftovers. And he's doing reruns of uh, the we got, you know, the stuff he missed on uh, Freaker's Ball with Moose Girl. But on the other side of this whole coin, I've been listening to Moose and I was trying to talk her into doing her own thing separate and uh doing it with a little bit of music and then maybe pick a topic when i heard her explain her experience with the housing and it explained it so well you know that she really did a good job of that and but she was uninterrupted there wasn't any music me and Vinny were just letting her you know let her get to the point of what she was talking about it was really good to hear it so Maybe they'll get more of that from her. But I thought a solo show is easier to just focus. Like I'm trying to do on Thursday. It's just my own shit. Like tonight, I didn't have anything planned. So I didn't have anything. But Thursday night, I'm going to have some deep, intricate thought. <laughs> to take my future cult followers down that road to success. <laughs> anyway, this is Flash signing off from me in a perfect world. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Roger Wilco over and